Pumpkin, the original king of the beats. Earl Bedward, better known as Pumpkin, came from a musical family. He mastered several instruments, but his favorite was the drum. He was fluent in Spanish, as his father's side of his family was Costa Rican and Panamanian. In the early 70s, before hip hop even existed, Pumpkin would practice on his drum set in his garage. Those who knew Pumpkin personally said that's where you could find Pumpkin, practicing in his garage. There's a church directly across the street from Pumpkin's house, and even they got used to the noise. According to Foundation Era MC Cool Cow the Star Child, Pumpkin had a drum set as early as 12 or 13 years old. Kyle, who grew up with Pumpkin in the Northeast Bronx, says that within a few blocks radius, there were several musicians and vocalists who would contribute to hip hop and R&B music. These artists include Christopher Williams, Steve Jordan, drummer for Dave Letterman Show, Vincent Davis, owner of Entertainment Records, who signed Keith Sweat, Dougie Fresh, and Joe Ski Love, amongst others. Also legendary hip hop DJ and radio personality Chuck Chillout. Since Kyle played Little League with Steve Jordan, he had to walk past Pumpkin's house to get to Steve Jordan's house. He would see Pumpkin practicing in his garage. He befriended Pumpkin and told Pumpkin that he was into the drums too and about to get a drum set soon. A friendship developed based on this love of music, the drums particularly. Within months of meeting Pumpkin, Cool Cow did get his drum set and they practiced together at Pumpkin's house, right there in the garage. Cool Cow shared with me a little known personal fact about Pumpkin. He was really good at braiding hair. According to Cow, back in the mid 70s, this was kind of weird for a young teenager to be a male hairdresser. It's normal now, but Cow said it was weird for the time. Cal had a huge afro and he inquired where he could go to get it braided. Somebody said go to Pumpkin, he braids hair. Reluctantly, Cal went to Pumpkin and asked him, and Pumpkin said sure. Pumpkin was starting to draw quite a crowd in his garage practice sessions. One of these crowds were the members of the Funky Four Plus One. The Funky Four started practicing with Pumpkin and told Bobby Robinson about Pumpkin. Bobby Robinson actually came to the garage to hear Pumpkin play. Bobby Robinson, who had had huge successes in the R&B and doo-wop genres of music, was just getting into hip-hop and producing hip-hop records on his new label, Enjoy Records. Bobby hired Pumpkin, and Pumpkin would play on most of those records. Pumpkin was able to play multiple instruments, but he preferred playing the drums on those records. He knew other musicians, and he would assemble them to come in and play on the records. Some of these records were credited to Pumpkin and some were credited to Pumpkin and Friends. Those friends were the other musicians who helped him to arrange and play on those records. While Sylvia Robinson, founder of Sugar Hill Records, was signing her first rap acts, the Sugar Hill Gang and Sequence, Bobby Robinson was snatching up actual Bronx groups who were in the streets and clubs where hip hop was born. Groups like the Funky Four Plus One and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. The first rap song in Joy Records was Rappin' and Rockin' the House by the Funky Four Plus One, with Pumpkin on the drums. Like many of the early rap records, Rappin' and Rockin' the House was well over 10 minutes long. Additionally, like many of the first rap records, it was based on a popular break in the streets, and that break was the breakdown to Cheryl Lynn's Gotta Be Real. The next set of songs that Pumpkin played on would become breakbeats within themselves. With Spoonie G's cousin Poochie Costello on congas, Pumpkin and Poochie crafted a few Treacherous 3 records that would become the backdrop of many of the routines on the live tapes that circulated in New York City and the Tri-State area. If you're listening to any live hip-hop tape recorded between 1980 and 1983, it's very difficult not to hear love rap, Heartbeat, or the new rap language by Spoonie G and the Treacherous Three. As a breakbeat, the love rap was probably the most popular amongst those Enjoy records. Based on the drum pattern from a song called Squib Cakes by Tower of Power, Love rap dominated, 
and is probably one of the more popular Enjoy records. But there were several more to follow, and Pumpkin's distinctive drumming would define the sound of Enjoy records. Greg G. from the Disco Four, a group which Bobby Robinson's son was a member of, suggested that Pumpkin come over to Profile Records, where they just signed. Reportedly, Pumpkin was given $12,000 up front to come to Profile and record with them exclusively. Profile, the label that Run DMC was signed to, was one of the premier labels for second generation recorded rap acts. Many of the acts from the first generation of recorded rap who were signed to Enjoy Records, also came to Profile. And Pumpkin would play drums on those records as well. Pumpkin would also record his own instrumental record where he proclaimed himself King of the Beat. The record that would solidify Pumpkin was called Here Comes That Beat and it was credited to Pumpkin and the Profile All-Stars. The Disco Four, Fresh 3 MCs, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde went for broke on this early posse track. With Jekyll and Hyde's DJ scratch on Galaxy's distinctive scratching, a perfect hook, perfect singing, and a perfect beat, this was the record to contend with in 1984. It's been stated but not verified that Aaron Fuchs of Tough City Records was using Pumpkin Services on some records under different aliases because he was still signed to Profile Records. But Pumpkin did record several records with Aaron Fuchs' Tough City label. Pumpkin produced some other records also that were outside of Enjoy Records or Profile. It's been said that Pumpkin's favorite instruments were the Lindrum, the TR-808, and a Roland synthesizer. It's been said that he could mimic any drum pattern on a drum machine, and that drum pattern would sound like he was playing real drums, and it was very difficult to distinguish if it was a drum machine or actual drums. One thing for certain, Pumpkin is the prototype for the hip-hop producer. Over at Sugar Hill Records, Sylvia was using bands to replay popular records in the streets. While Bobby Robinson over at Enjoy Records was doing the same thing, Sugar Hill never really graduated to the drum machine era, even though they did use drum machines on some of their recordings. After Pumpkin stint with Enjoy Records playing with bands on live drums, he mastered those drum machines and he deserves the title, the king of the beats. Pumpkin was one of the first, if not the first, that was actually selling beats to record labels, much like the hip hop producers of today. Pumpkin would succumb to complications from pneumonia in the early 90s before he was even 30 years old. But he leaves behind a canon of classics that are still enjoyed and still influential today. This is Jay Kwan, MC, DJ, producer, Hip Hop Historian. For more information on Foundation Era MCs and DJs, check out my website, The Foundation. The, that's T-H-A, 
foundation.com. Also check me out on all social media at Jaquan VA. That's J-A-Y-Q-U-A-N-V-A. 